Welcome back to another episode of Weekly Money. This week, I want to highlight two drivers that are on my team uh, that I dispatch for, and both of them are CDL drivers, have 40-foot trailers. I know that goes against the grain of what most of you think hot shotting is, uh, hot shotting can be. Everybody thinks it's non-CDL, you're trying to avoid getting a CDL, and there's benefits to having a CDL. So I hope to share a little bit of, uh, of their experience, shine a little bit of light on the benefits of having a CDL, at least from my perspective. Um, let's jump into that. Now, for the record, this is my opinion on these things. This is not gospel. This is not the law. This is not the rule. This is my opinion, my perspective on these things. If you don't like it, that's fine. Uh, find another channel to watch or create your own channel and share your own thoughts. But these are my thoughts, my perspective. So, um, and by the way, th I am in no way and nor will I ever take the glory, the shine or the respect away from the men and women that drive semis out there. I honestly don't have the stones to drive a vehicle that big. I just don't. I mean, it, my hat goes off to you guys and ladies. I pass you all the time on the highway and I'm like, man, that's still, it's like watching an airplane fly. It never gets old. It's like, man, that's, that's freaking amazing. So uh, much respect to all of you. I'm not in any way looking to take away respect from you guys or what you do at all. Cause Lord knows I don't have the stones to do it. Um, now, some of the things that I believe are advantages to um, hotshot drivers that have their CDL uh, that are driving hot shots versus driving semis are these maneuverability. So hot shots in general can get into tighter spaces than semis can. Can a lot of folks that drive semis that are really, really experienced and have a really good uh, skill set uh, for maneuverability, can they get into tight spaces? Absolutely. Um, but it's just a lot easier to do it with a hot shot because um, it's it's just a shorter trailer. Uh, the, the biggest trailer you're more than likely going to get for a hot shot is 40 feet. Your truck is about 20 feet. So you have a 60 foot rig altogether. Uh, if the, the, the trailer for a, a, a semi, whether it's flatbed or, or, a, or a van is between 48 and 53 feet. That's almost the size of my whole truck and trailer combined. Uh, well, actually, it's bigger than my truck and trailer combined because I only have a 32 foot. But my CDL hotshot drivers that I'm going to show you in a second, their truck and trailer combined is 60 feet. So their truck and trailer combined is eight more feet than the van behind a semi. So think about that. They obviously have an advantage when it comes to being able to get in and out of tighter spaces. Flexibility. I, for example, love the idea of having a pickup truck that I can do things with. For example, I flip houses in my spare time. Uh, I'm able to run to Home Depot, run to Lowe's, get wood, get eight, you know, eight foot panels of sheetrock because I have an eight foot bed. I can use my truck for things other than just hauling freight and working. I can go to the grocery store if I need to. I can help my mom move if she needs to. There's a lot of things I can do with a pickup truck, <clears throat> excuse me, that a semi driver can't do with their, with their semi power unit when they're not hauling. So for me, I think that's a really, really big deal. And also, when you go somewhere and you need to unhook for your 34-hour reset, if you feel comfortable locking the gooseneck of your trailer, you can parade around town in your pickup as if you were home. You can do it to a certain extent with a semi, but not, not, the, not to the same degree. As far as repairs, from what I understand, repairs for semis are a lot more expensive. Tires are a lot more expensive. Everything's a lot more expensive. Um, granted, do I hear all the semi drivers screaming at their phones and their tablets and their computers saying, yeah, but our trucks are going to last a million miles or more and you guys are going to conk out at three, four hundred thousand. You're more than likely right about that. Chances are the life of a semi is twice as long, if not more than the life of the engine and tranny of, you know, a 3,500 or 4,500 or, or whatever kind of truck you have in that same class. So that's more than likely true. However, the repairs as you go are more than likely going to be less expensive in a hotshot rig versus a semi. Now, as far as rates, a lot of people have questions about you get paid more because you're hauling in a semi. Look, semis haul more weight, hands down. So we cap out at about 12 to 15,000 pounds per load. Granted, 40 foot uh, hotshot trailers are made to take, uh, to be able to, to scale uh, loads that are 23,000 pounds. But honestly, 23,000 pounds of a load and 8,000 pounds, <clears throat> excuse me, of a, uh, of, a, of a 40 foot trailer, you're at 31,000 pounds. My Ram 3500 is a 2019. I uh, have the ASIN transmission, Cummins engine. That together is, a, is the high output configuration, puts out 1,000 feet pounds of torque. I can take, according to the specs, I can haul um, uh, 31,400 pounds with that. Would I ever? No. And even my guys that I'm going to show you in this video that have 40-foot trailers and they both have Ram 3500s, 
Uh, one of them has said, I don't want to take a load more than 12,000. And the other one has said, I don't want to take a load more than 15,000. They're both still far below the max rating for their, for the, for their trailer of 23,000 pound max load weight. So they're trying to baby their trailers, which I understand because you own them. They're not inexpensive. They're not cheap. And you want to prolong the life of your trailer and not end up on the side of the road and stuff like that. So I respect their decision and I dispatch for them accordingly. Um, as far as the rates go, though, semis do make more on longer hauls because dispatchers and shippers know that they need more money because they're burning more fuel, which brings me to MPG. Um, rate wise, more than likely and most often the rates are the same for a hot shot rig as it is for a semi rig, as long as it's the same weight. When it gets to a point where a hot shot rig can't can't scale the weight of the load, then obviously that's a semi only kind of a load. But as long as it's a load that can be scaled by a hot shot rig, 12, 15,000 pounds, 20 if you if you have the stones to do that, uh, or the the muscle, the the bravery to do that, I should say, then knock yourself out. But otherwise, um, the rates are pretty much the same. And if you get paid a bit more in a semi, it's either because it's something that a hot shot can't take, um, or uh, it's just, you know, you got a lot of tolls ahead of you and the tolls are more expensive and all those things and dispatchers, hopefully, and shippers, hopefully, um, you know, pay you more because they know you're going to incur more costs. Speaking of costs, MPG, when it comes to fuel, semis are at four, five, six, seven, eight miles a gallon on average. My truck, when I, <clears throat> excuse me, when I run it empty is, uh, giving me about 17, 15 to 17 miles a gallon. When I run it with a trailer that's empty, I'm at about 12 to 13 miles a gallon. And when I have a load on it, I'm between 10, sometimes nine on a hill, but between 10 and 12 miles a gallon, so depending on the weight of the load. So, and these guys did about the same MPG. So, um, that's something you have to take into consideration is that you're going to save on fuel because you have a smaller truck, uh, that is better on fuel. And speaking of fuel savings, if you do not have a fuel card, and you're hot shotting, or if you do not have a fuel card and you're about to start hot shotting, or if you do not have a fuel card and you own more than one truck, if any one of those labels fit you, you need a fuel card. Uh, you can get whichever one you want. The one I use saves on average 50 cents a gallon. I just filled up the other day and saved 81 cents per gallon. The sticker, I mean, the, the sign on the, on the road said one thing for that fuel station. I looked on my app and it was literally 81 cents less for me just because of this fuel card. It's a free fuel card. If you want it, I mean, it's foolish to not have it. It's free. If you want it, email me at um, hotshotgameplan at gmail.com or go in the comment section below or go in the description section below. Click the link for fuel card. There's a kiosk. You put in your name, your phone number, and they will call you back and get you signed up. It's a free fuel card. There's no reason not to have it. It's asinine not to have it. All right, let's get into how much these guys made per load every day this past week. Shout out to my new driver. I'm super excited to be dispatching for this guy. He's eating up the road. He goes any and everywhere just about, as long as it's not uh, Silicon Valley in San Francisco. He adamantly told me, don't put me in that area. It's horrible for trucks. Um, I like that we're able to communicate in English. Un poquito en español. It's a great relationship. Uh, he's an experienced truck driver, just came from the semi world, and he did amazing this week. His authority went live on Monday. On Tuesday, he ran his first load as a hotshot driver. This was his first load, this truck right here. Uh, it was very easy to do. Guided him through some of the equipment he needed, all the supplies he needed, like the straps that you see. Uh, it was obviously a quick pick, straight run, an easy drop. And this was the first load of his hotshot career. I'm sure we'll do great. While he was still pulling that first load, I had already lined up this load for the following day. Two 20-foot containers totaling about 10,300 pounds, uh, paying 1300 bucks. Not bad at all. Now, this is, a, this is case in point. This is a prime example of when having a CDL comes in handy. Because if you had a 40-foot trailer and this truck and this load, you would already be overweight because your trailer would be so heavy uh, that it would put you overweight, but you need a 40 foot trailer to carry this load because it's 40 feet long. It's two 20 foot containers. So in this case, having a CDL made all the difference for him to be able to pick up this 10,300 pound load with a 40 foot trailer, which was necessary. And it weighs about 8,000 pounds. So because of the CDL, it was absolutely perfect. If he did not have a CDL, I would not have been able to book this load for him. 
These two little pumps were a quick 850 going about 310 miles, uh, but this money almost didn't happen. <laughs> I was going so fast that I forgot to run this broker of this load through my factoring company to make sure that the broker was on with the factoring company and they were in good standing with the factoring company. I forgot to do that. So uh, once my driver delivered the load, he went to go factor the load and we found out, oh, shoot. These uh, this broker is not even, you know, in good standing with my factoring company. So you guys have heard me say from the beginning, I've used the same factoring company from day one. Not telling you to use them, but if you need one, they're great. Email me. I'll tell you who they are, how to get connected with them or go down to the links in the description and or comment sections below. I was able to give them a shout and say, look, I dropped the ball here. This broker is not signed up with you guys, doesn't have credit with you guys. So my guy can't factor his load. Can you please reach out to them, confirm, you know, their the the broker's bond and their MC and all those kind of things. Make sure they're on the up and up. Um, so so my guy can factor this load. It was my error. I dropped the ball. Dude, in 30 minutes, they had reached out to the broker, confirmed their information, confirmed that they were legit, uh, approved them for more than enough credit, more than enough than the 850. So my guy was able in an hour, an hour later, after all this happened, he was able to factor this load and we just kept it moving. We finished the week off with a quick 400 out of load and then headed home. The best part about finishing off the week strong this way is number one, the earnings for the week for this four day week, first week on the road were $3,450. The only thing better than that is that we have a $2,200 load already booked and ready to be picked up Monday morning. That's not too shabby for your first week on the road with a brand new MC number, literally a one day old MC number. And that's really not a bad start to week number two. Now my second CDL driver took some time off and on Thursday, uh, I found him a load picking up on Friday. So he picked up these two containers, uh, obviously worth a boatload of money and they were going quite a ways. Now, as far as mileage goes, 1,453 miles were dedicated to this load. We ended up dropping one of the containers off and picking up uh, another load because we had some empty space. We picked up another load right after and that went literally on the same route that we would have been taking to drop the remaining container off, if that makes any sense. We picked up some stone and the stone was two hours away from where we dropped off the first of those two containers in New Mexico. The route that the stone had to travel to get dropped off was exactly the same route we were gonna travel to drop the container off. As a matter of fact, the drop-off points for the stone and the second container were within three hours of each other up in Washington. So this worked out perfectly. Now, as far as the route goes, the GPS offered two different routes going across Colorado, really, really mountainous. And also the chain law is in effect in Colorado, especially on I-70 uh, from September 1st to May 31st, which says that if you're going to go on I-70 in that time frame, you have to have chains on board your truck, not necessarily on your tires, but at least on board in case a freak snow event happens, um, or at least have, you know, these, these, um, these tire socks or these wheel socks um, so that you can put that on too, as long as they're approved by DOT. We decided not to deal with any of that and just go straight up over to Washington. In Washington, we dropped off both of those container or the container and that, that load of rocks. And we went ahead and picked up this other container in Seattle, headed back to Montana to drop that off. The perfect bow on top to this week was that this receiver unloaded on Saturday. So we were able to unload this container and have a $6,800 seven day stretch. Perfect time for a 34 hour reset. In style, in nature, at Flathead Lake in Montana. Now that's how you reset in class. Flathead Lake, Montana. <laughs> right outside Missoula, or in, yeah. About 150 miles from Missoula. Mission Creek. 